round 17. This season's gone actually really quick. It feels like it's just flown by. And we're at round 17, and this is a crunch game. It's fifth versus fourth. Saints v D's. Jack Steele's 150th. We know how we go in milestone games, so we won't talk about that too much other than congrats to Jack Steele, awesome player. Very lucky to have him. Hopefully he has his best game of the season in this game. Melbourne going into this have lost their, I think, four of their last six. So they're, they're in struggle town a little bit. They're struggling to kick goals. I did a preview with Big D's fan Cade McDonald earlier in the week. So check that out if you'd like. We cover the game and a bit more. But for the D's, their big issue lately is just not kicking enough goals. They're generating plenty of chances. For instance, last week, 73 inside 50s to 46 to GWS. Heaps more contested ball, heaps more clearances, and they lost by a couple of points. On the flip side for us, we played West Coast, got a massive scare, found ourselves about 31 points down in the second quarter, found a way to win in the second half, and secured our ninth win of the season, putting us only percentage outside the top four, only percentage away from the Ds who we face on Saturday night. So this is a very intriguing game. Both teams, I would say, are you know, the teams in the top eight that are struggling to kick goals the most. Us, probably more structure and just the way we're playing. The Ds, it's more execution. They're just kicking a lot of points. So it wouldn't surprise me if this is a game where they just kick 20 goals straight. But we're not going to set the tone and be negative in that one because that's, that's been the tone the whole week since the West Coast game. So I want to get past that. But for us, obviously, we've got the changes. They're announced, so that's the good thing about doing, I guess, my preview a bit later this week is the teams are announced. And there is some, you know, there's some big outs, but there are some big ins. So we'll quickly go through it. So the outs, obviously, Josh Battle, concussion. We knew that was going to happen. Ronnie Burns omitted. Jack Higgins injured with a knee complaint. Apparently, it's just a bit of a sore one. Just for this week, he should be back to play the West, uh, to play the Gold Coast Suns next weekend. Same with Brad Hill. I went to the open training session yesterday, and they put him through his paces, did a lot of tests um, with Seb Ross as well, who was a bit touch and go, similar to Hilly. Seb looks good. Hilly pulled up a little bit sore after a few sprints, um, and it just didn't look great. So I kind of knew. All right, they're probably going to give him the week off, and that's what's happened. Brad Hill out for just hopefully the one week. Uh, in terms of the ins, Jack Billings is back. So Jack Billings is back. I think that's great. He's earned his spot with some good form at Sandy. Zane Cordy is back as well. I think probably to play more in the back line than he has this season um, because of Josh Battle's absence. And then the last one, a man we haven't seen at all this season either, similar to Jack Billings, is Zachy Jones who has torn it up at Sandy, particularly last week, 35 disposals and just dominated the game. Um, he's back, and I think that's perfect timing against the Ds, who are going to be missing Clayton Oliver, who are going to be missing Bailey Fritch. Um, I think we need someone like Zach Jones in that midfield because for the last month I feel like we've just been 2-1 paced. Obviously we're winning a bit of the ball. Brad Crouch is getting his hands on it a lot. Jack Steele's getting a bit better. Uh, Jade Gresham goes through there. Machito Mich Owens goes through there. Seb Ross goes through there. But none of them really have that breakaway pace that Zach Jones can bring. And I think in a game like this, under the roof at Marvel, Melbourne aren't the quickest team. You know, they're a very good contested ball team. They get the ball and they just get it inside 50 as quickly as they can by foot. But I think in terms of leg speed, I think Zach Jones can really be a factor in this game. And we found that in 2020 when he was playing amazing football in his first season at the Saints that you just get him the ball and he would break the lines and open up the game completely. And to be fair, that's what we did in the first part of the season without him. And we've stopped doing that. So hopefully with someone like Zachy Jones back, it invites a bit more of that sort of game style, which I'm really excited to see because I can't imagine we can get into a bit of a slow slog with the Ds because for me, that just invites Lever and May to have you know 50 marks each and just dominate the game we need to play with pace we need to make sure that they have no time to set in the back half because if they do max king is going to have another very long night similar to the one against brisbane uh, where harris andrews just tore us a new one we need to be moving the ball fast we need to be flexible in the forward line lower our eyes um and you know not just focus on max king's being the one option because i think that's been Bit of an issue for us as well since he's returned is that we just love to kick it to Maxi and as much as he is going to be a very good player for us, we need to look at other avenues to kick goals and 
Um, I think, you know, Melbourne are going to be doing the same. They've got Bailey Fritch, who's missing. He's a big, big factor in that forward line. Obviously, they've got Ben Brown. They've got other players there. Similar to us, you know, we've got other players that are capable. Matt, Mitch Owens kicked four last week. Um, he's in good form. Filippo retains his spot. Obviously, our smalls are dangerous. Jack Higgins is missing, but Dan Butler's there. We've got enough, I think, in, you know, Jade Gresham will rotate through this. So I think we've got enough in the forward half to, to cause their back line some problems. It's really just delivery. It's really just how do we get it in there, you know? So if our delivery can improve on last week, I think the second half was better. It's hard to gauge because it was West Coast, but the second half was better. We ran in waves, we lowered our eyes, and you saw we, we, we kicked goals at ease in that third quarter. Seven goals to three, I think it was. So um, the first half we bombed it. We cannot do that against Melbourne. We cannot do that against Melbourne. Um, and that's when we have the ball. But obviously when we're defending, we need to make sure that we're really, really strong in our structures. Melbourne are a really good lead at the football team, I think. You know, from what I've seen, I don't think they bomb it as much as people think. I think, you know, Bailey Fritch invites a lead. Ben Brown invites a lead. You know, he's great. He's got great reach. You can put it on his head. But Ben Brown, you know, in his prime was one of the best sort of lead at the footy forwards going around. So, um yeah, we're going to have to keep a, a big eye out on that. And then obviously in the middle of the ground, no Oliver, but they've still got a very good midfield. Obviously, Petrarch is in very good form. Viney is in very good form. Um, they've got Lockie Hunter now on the wing, and he's getting a lot of the footy going through the guts, I think, a little bit as well. So they've got plenty there to cause us problems, even without Clayton Oliver. So we cannot look at this and go, well, they've not got Oliver. Okay, we're a chance. You know, They're a top four team for a reason. They won the flag a couple of years ago. They want to make sure they create a bit of a gap between us and the rest in the top four. And um, this is a big opportunity for them to do that, but also a big opportunity for us. This is our statement game. We stuffed it against Port. That was a statement game. And Brisbane, that was a statement game. I would have said Collingwood, but that was at Adelaide Oval. These two, Port and Brizzy, were Marvel on our deck with limited excuses to put in a good showing. And... Um, we, we were poor in both. So this is another one where it's prime time. It's our captain's 150th. It's a chance. It's a game to go into the top four. It's not a game to uh, secure finals or sneak into the eight or whatever. It's it's literally win and you're fourth with Gold Coast, North and Hawthorne to come or something. So this is this could be that shift in the ladder, the only change that we see for the rest of the year if we keep up you know, a solid bit of form uh, for the remainder of the season because... You know, I look at it like, okay, we started the season really well and then we've, we've petered off a little bit. But if we pick up and finish the way we started the season, I'm going, yeah, that's fine by me. But if we carry through the form of the West Coast game into this game, it's just going to feed into every week from here on in. And we're probably going to, you know, drop a few games that we shouldn't. And that's going to put us in a really uncomfortable position going into the last game of the season, which is Brisbane at the Gabba. And you do not want to be fighting for finals for a chance to be in the eight when you're playing Brisbane at the Gabba in round 24. You don't want to be in that position. We want to have it locked up before then, and then we can go at that game with a free hit before finals. That's that's the ideal scenario for me. So we need to pinch a game against a team like Melbourne. We haven't done it all season. You know, last year even we pinched a game against Geelong in round nine. We were the last team to beat them before the flag. I want us to have a game like that. We just need to get through this game, get the four points against good quality opposition, and I think that'll build some belief for us. So I'll wrap it up there, Sanders. That's my kind of top-line thoughts. We go into it a bit more detail with Kate and McDonald, so check out that preview. That was posted, I think, on Tuesday or Wednesday, so have a suss of that. Uh, like and comment as well. Let me know how you're feeling about the game. Hopefully we get a decent crowd Saturday night, so um, you'd imagine it'll be hopefully upwards of 30, 4th v 5th, two Melbourne teams. Although I know D's fans don't like to go to Mar Marvel too much. But um, yeah, hopefully we can get the chocolates. Um, we've got, I think, 107 subs to go until we hit 7,000 subscribers. And then I'll be giving away the signed portrait, Rui portrait. Um, when we hit 7,000, I'll be picking a random subscriber who will take that home um, as, as the prize. So if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It'd mean a lot. Uh, we've got Saints TV Plus bonus content on there if you'd like to sign up. And uh, yeah, plenty more content planned, uh, obviously, for the rest of the year. But 
Right now, we're focused on Saturday night. It's a big one. We should be in the victory room, I think, beforehand, hopefully chatting to some players. At least Joycey will be. I'm not sure if I'll be there, but Joycey will be there. Marshy's not going to be there. So there'll be some Saints TV people there, hopefully. Um, it, it should be a good night, and even better if we can notch up a win. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Friday, and I'll see you tomorrow night after the game, hopefully, to talk about a win. Until then, take care. As always, go, you mighty Saints. See you guys.